Hello, I'm Adam, pastor of student ministry here at Ninth and O Baptist Church, and this is Devotionables, brief devotions for busy people. So in Devotionables, we're, we're tracing big words through Scripture, words that, that, tr- that are traced along the entirety of Scripture, throughout the entire narrative, from Genesis to Revelation. Today, we're going to look at Adam. Now, Adam was more than just the man, more than just the first man, but Adam has an important role to play as we look at biblical theology. Now, when I meet someone and they say to me, Oh, Adam, that's a very strong biblical name. It tells me that they don't know very much about their scripture. Because when I hear that I've been named after Adam from Genesis, I think, well, that means I'm named after the one through whom death and sin have entered the world. And that's not a great scriptural legacy to, uh, to follow behind. So I try not to associate myself with that, Adam. No, but, uh, you know, it's an interesting way to kind of gauge someone's scriptural knowledge from when they introduce themselves to me in that way. But Adam is an important figure. He's important for many reasons. First, as an historical figure, he's extremely important. The events of Genesis 1 through 3 are extremely important for us. And so when we look at Adam and the events that happened to Adam and Eve, we build so many of our core doctrines off of these events. Think about trying to explain the doctrine of, of marriage or a doctrine of creation without Adam and Eve. Think about trying how to, how to explain the, the doctrines of family order, of original sin, of death without Adam. How can you share the gospel without the events that took place if they were not true and real in the, in the book of Genesis? It'd be incoherent. So we need Adam, the historical Adam. But Adam is more than just historically relevant. Adam is a, Christ, is a type of Christ. So everything that Adam was supposed to be, Christ fulfills. Michael Morales, in his book, Who Shall Ascend the Mountain of the Lord, paints this beautifully. He, 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 he makes the case that in Genesis, Adam was supposed to be prophet, priest, and king. In, in, when, when, in God's perfect order of Eden, before sin entered the world. But then sin did enter the world. Adam is a type of Christ. But not only that, Adam is an anti-type. We know this from Romans 5, 1 Corinthians 15, that sin and death entered the world through this one man. But through Christ, the free gift of life, justification has come through Christ. And so Adam not only is a type of Christ, but an anti-type. Christ has fulfilled all that Adam is supposed to be. Christ has fulfilled all that we are supposed to be. So as we look at Adam, we also should be reminded of Christ. Thank you for listening.